I feel like a lot of people don't understand and how well thought out mining is, especially in the United States. When you talk about coal, people think like 1940s underground coal miner with black coal dust all over their face, you know, with a pickaxe. That's not really coal mining. yesterday, picked up Mr. Matt Briscoe, Mr. Angel, Mr. Ben Schwanberg is also with us. And now we are at the Sabine Mine in Texas, operated by North American Coal. Great company, we've been working with them for a while. We've seen a lot of their operations in Mississippi and North Dakota. Now we're here in Texas, tomorrow Louisiana. It's gonna be a good trip. This is what we're after right here. Beautiful Texas coal. It's a mine-to-mouth operation, so there's a power plant not too far from here. The haul trucks taking coal directly to the power plant from the ground. You're gonna see some drag lines today, and I don't know what else. It is wet, it rained all night, so they don't run typically when it rains this much, which is just our luck. From 1970 to 2019, the gross domestic product has increased by 285%. Mm -hmm. The vehicle miles traveled have increased by 195%. The population has increased by 60%, yet the aggregate emissions for six common pollutants has dropped by 77%. We've taken something that showed, you know, was truly harming the United States and its citizenry, and we've, we've fixed it. We're gonna get on the machine. What what drag line is this? What kind of drag line? That's a Marion. Marion. Marion 8200. I feel like miners are very misunderstood. People think they're just totally uneducated Neanderthals with pickaxes. It's just like, it's such a, such an antiquated public perception of miners. Marion 8200, she's a big girl. That's the stuff. That is the stuff. Splat. Ha <laughs> ha. You got everything you needed. If not, we'll come back. All right, we'll be here. With lunch. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, you didn't get everything you wanted. Right? <laughs> Thanks, guys. You Thank you. Me. Update, we visited the field, so you saw the two drag lines. We rode on the one of them, 8200. We saw the truck shovel operation, where they were working on reclamation of what's already been mined, super cool. And now we're gonna go see some pretty reclaimed land that's been mined and restored to what it was before that. Usually when we do these tours, what we like people to see 
what's it look like at the beginning what's it look like at the end what are our goals what are we trying to accomplish it makes a, a better impression if you can look at what it looks like when the drag line gets done and then we can come back as we come back it's like walking forward in time Once the drag line opens a pit, that starts your reclamation timetable. Once he opens the pit, they remove the coal. Once they remove the coal, he's on to the next pit and that pit starts getting reclaimed. When he throws the spoil peaks up, the next step is for the large dozers to come in and start the regrade process. And then as soon as they get it to that point, we're coming in with four foot of oxidized material, which is our reclamation soil. As soon as they get that reclamation soil put down, then we come in with our reclamation contractor and we start the reclamation process, which the first step in that is planting temporary vegetation to stabilize the soil. Once we have the temporaries down and the soil stabilized, we're gonna come in with our permanent crop. And then once we get the permanent vegetation, it's basically a waiting game at that point. There's a series of different benchmark monitoring uh, requirements to show that the ground is stable, the soil is viable, that the permanent crop that's in there is successful, and that our water quality is in good shape. Ultimately, once those things are done, we are going to submit that for phase one, two, and three bond release, which is the release of the regulatory obligation. At that point, it's back to the private landowner. So that's kind of the whole loop in a nutshell. Before you can turn the first shovel of dirt, you have to understand the environment that you're going to be impacting. You have to look at the groundwater. You have to look at the surface water. You have to look at the soil chemistry. You have to look at rainfall and climactic impacts. You have to understand how all of this is going to work as a system before you can even get started. The size difference looks really funny on you. <laughs> you got you barely hanging over and then Ben's up there. <laughs> We're on a shop. We just saw reclamation. Now we're gonna check out the shop where they fix broken stuff. Yeah. Press call haulers and 785s and PT 2000s and drag lines. That's all sick, but check this thing out. Have you ever met Miss Lindy? She's a gal with the bright red hair. Now nah, she stands high from all the rest. You know. There's a plan for, for every single coal mine in the United States. There is a plan in place that describes how the mining activities are going to occur, how the environment's going to be protected as mining occurs, and then what the reclamation is going to look like and when it's going to occur and how it's going to occur. And so none of it's being done willy-nilly. And then once mining operations begin, we have to comply with the Surface Mining Control of Reclamation Act of 1977. So we have to make sure that our reclamation, you know, stays buttoned up to the, the active operations. We have to make sure that contemporaneous reclamation is going on, that we're not leaving these legacy uh, eyesores in the post mine landscape. You have to make sure that, that the, the post mine landscape topography mirrors the pre-mine landscape. You have to make sure that the land is as productive or more productive than it was before mining. Our goal as, as surface coal miners is when we're done, 
and we leave an operation, somebody comes in 50 to 100 years, they'd never know that we were there. Day two. Day two. They were attracted on it. That's how you know we're out here. They, they when wild. That machine right there is primarily used for digging dirt. Okay. She's pretty. <laughs> That's impressive house. That's a it's a beautiful Look uh, how look how thick the boom is. She's, I got, she's a big girl. I, yeah, that might be the best looking excavator I've ever seen. He was reaching way out. And she was just had her ass in on the dirt, no problem. What they're doing here right now, we're in the process. They're removing this dirt, and we're going to eventually make uh, mine the coal out and make this a pond to catch water. I'm gonna be making my cut long ways to that snake line, taking all this out as I go. We didn't do an intro this morning. Uh, we drove about an hour and a half through the back roads of nowhere, Louisiana. Left Shreveport this morning about 5.30, you got to the mine at about 7. And here we are. We are at the Five Forks mine. Again, North American Coal, that's who we're with today. This has a very long lifespan. I think they had, they said it has another 30 years coal seam. This is a unique operation because the other operations we've seen, they have drag lines because the coal is really deep. This coal is not as deep. That's, that looks a little deep, it's like 25, 30 feet, but over in some places, it was not all that deep. They run a 6020B, I have plenty of footage of that. Probably the coolest looking machine I've ever seen. I mean, the best looking excavator I've ever seen. 6020B, they run triple sevens to strip, and then this is where they're loading the coal into on-road trucks to take it to the plant. So they load it with the smaller excavator, the 374s, because this is a coal mine. Coal mines are very strict. You can't just take the coal and leave the earth as is. You gotta reclaim all the land to what it was before, if not better than what it was before. There's a whole slew of environmental rules and regulations that mining companies have to comply with. Uh, they're dynamic, they change. You know, when, when these major regulations were enacted in the 70s, Coal mining had a black eye. Mining in general had a black eye. Many of the industries in the United States weren't focused on you know, the environmental ramifications for their operations. And so these laws were enacted from a bipartisan standpoint to address real tangible concerns. And so when you look at how things have changed over time, it's almost indescribable. Today we're gonna to see mitigation resources in North America, which is, Pretty sweet. We'll explain it while we're out there. I think it's arguably the most fascinating thing this company does. I mean, yeah, mining is sick, big fan, but from an ecological perspective, it's pretty sweet. And then, so we'll see coal mining and mitigation banking today. You comfy, Ben? Y'all ever seen the, uh, the clown car at the circus? <laughs> That's what this is. all new construction in the last few weeks. We leave a plug in from where this stream S5R2 comes across here. 
but we have to leave this plug in to let the water keep draining off and keep off of us. So they're stacking all their extra material here that once we can open these plugs up, we'll shove all this in this old channel that's going on south to the river. This site's a permittee responsible mitigation is just that there so there's no net loss of stream or wetlands uh, throughout a process of impact so it's if it was farm property it has to yield a, a certain amount of a crop each year if it had streams they have to put streams back in those areas as well and wetlands and they have to plant species back that is in accordance with the state and what what would expect it to be be there before <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Red Hills Mine. Yeah, they're pretty sweet, huh? <coughs> All right, two of you want to come with me? Yeah. Everyone in this country could not live a single day without mining, and yet they're just so quick to criticize it without understanding how important it is. It's like, hey, like you could not even turn the lights on something that simple or charge your phone without what we do. You don't, you just don't understand it. If you think about a surface coal mine, I mean, we have six seams of coal. Each seam is separated by a layer of dirt. So it's 200 feet deep, two miles wide. And that's, that's our active pit. We uncover a, a layer of coal. We take it, we send it to the power plant. And then that dirt, gets put behind. And so we're constantly tilling the dirt about 200 feet deep. We take the unoxidized material, we put it on the bottom, and then we take the red dirt, the stuff that was on top before, and we haul it back around and we put it back on top after. And we end up with a, a topography that'll be stable and that can support a really strong vegetative community when we're done. I think a monster. Yeah, it is. Look at the mill. Yeah, look at you. Can see the mill. That's pretty cool too, because you could get that with the trucks and the drag line in the background. That's been mined. It's all been mined. Are there any gators to wrestle in here? When the blueberries gonna be ready? Damn, that wasn't as good. Here in a couple weeks. What are all these planted here for? 
So every year we bring out um, the fourth grade classes in the county. And on Arbor Day, and they come out, we plant trees and everything. Is that right? And then, yeah, do a whole spill, send them home with a tree. Do we get a tree? No. Too, too late. For tree. Damn it. Day is. <laughs> oh, that was a bad one. Found a good one, though. Ooh, that was a good one. From coal mine to uh, blueberry bushes. Good stuff. The land is so beautiful. You would have never known it was already mine because it's so pristine and gorgeous and, and the topography is identical. And I could not overstate how surprised I was by how beautiful the land was that you guys have left behind.